morning. <laughs> Smart uniform, which is more than I can say for most airlines. Flying to London, Gatwick? Yes, and on to Sydney. How many items are you checking in? Just the one. Could anyone have interfered with your bags since you packed them? Nope. Have you been given anything to take on the flight? I'm going to have to get up very early to get one over to Eric Pollard. <laughs> Put it on, please. I used to be in local government, uh, independent, junkets all over the world. Really? Mm. Uh, and now that I have a heart condition, uh, my wife has just let me... Really? If you could find me one with uh, extra leg room, that would be good. Do not get on the plane. Eric? All we have left, I'm afraid. Have a nice flight. Thank you so much. Standing up for what he believes in. And what good's that going to do? He should be thinking about us. Us working the farm without him. That's where his principles get us. I just ran into our friend in the village. What happened between you and him? Holly? Nothing. Well, that's not what he's saying. I offered to go on a date with him if he changed his statement. You did what? And is that it? He more or less said that a date wouldn't be enough. And what would be? I think you can guess. This is way out of hand, this. What the hell did you think you were doing getting involved? You don't think it affects us? What happens to you? Right, this is insane. It stops now. What are you doing? You're heading for prison and you're doing nothing about it. And now your own daughter is so desperate to keep you out she'd even think of... I'm going out. Moira! Boarding can, please. Uh, no, no, you've got to let us through. My husband's about to make a terrible mistake. Passengers only. Look, I'm just going to go and get him and I'll bring him straight back here. For heaven's sake, do I look like a criminal? Eric! <laughs> Come in. Ashley, I do hope it isn't inconvenient. Just a flying visit. Just answering my post. I just wanted to know whether you'd had any more thoughts on my play and pray initiative. None whatsoever. Disappointing. Enough of my place as it is, as I'm sure you'll understand. We're all busy, Ashley. I expect you've others to choose from. Oh, yes, no shortage there. You needn't worry about that. Right. It's just that I wanted the very best to represent the diocese in the bishop's trophy. This uh, other captain is pretty good, and I wanted a competitive game. Well, uh, good luck with that. A formidable player, by all accounts. Rather than Spode. Hang on, did you say Spode? Vincent Spode, yes. He's just taken over at St. Joseph's. Might turn out to be quite a find, I think. Why? Bit of a high flyer, actually. Busy, too, of course, but seems pretty keen on his cricket. Vincent Spode. Mm. Be taking over from me someday, I shouldn't wonder. And then, who knows, Lambeth Palace might not be too much of a stretch. Yes, I'm sure. I don't think I've ever met anyone more capable. Do you know? I used to. Oh. Well, it's a name you'll be hearing more often in the future, I can guarantee you. I'm sorry I couldn't persuade you. I'll play. Put my name down. Really? Mm. Oh, good for you. Knew you'd come round. <clears throat> Don't let me down, Ashley. Huh? 
We need to put on a good show. Yes, we do. Excuse me, is anyone sitting there? Hey, what do you want? It's about our hour and you're wasting your time. Well, I hope not, because I've already done that with your chas. This needs sorting, and it needs doing now. I've missed you so much. Valerie. Considering I'm on my way to collect you from Australia, I'm finding your presence here a little hard to come to terms with. What the hell is going on? The only thing you need to come to terms with is the fact that I love you. Excuse, excuse me. Yes, sir. I need to get off at once. Is there a problem? Yes. I have the most infuriating wife in the world, and I can't bear the thought of spending even five minutes with her cooped up on the same plane. Oh, I'm afraid there's nothing I can do at the moment, sir. We're about to start taxiing to the runway. Eric. You have some serious explaining to do, and you'd better start right now. I did everything I could to stop you getting on the plane. Where the hell's your mobile phone? Why do we get the feeling that it's all going to turn out to be my fault? When they wouldn't let us through the barrier, the only choice I had left was to buy a ticket. When did you get back? I never went away. What? I've been hiding in the B&B. I'm about to spend an entire day and night on an aeroplane to come and find you. Now we can spend it together. Uh, not to mention the extortionate price of the ticket, which is totally and utterly wasted. You're not seeing the bigger picture, Eric. I did. I, I know it was a little extreme. I'm the first to admit it. But I was a desperate woman. What? You really couldn't have worked out better, could it? Really? You're prepared to fly 10,000 miles to come and get me. Have you any idea how much that means to us? I know what it means to me. I have a heart condition. And that vindictive witch at the check-in went out of her way to give me the least comfortable place on the plane. Oh, poor Lord. And then, after 24 hours of sheer living hell, I find that you're not there, then I have to clamber back on the plane and do it all again. All because you loved us. And all because I've been conned into thinking you were the other side of the world, when, for some mad, inexplicable reason known only to yourself, you were living under my nose in the entire time. When we've calmed down, Eric, when we can think clearly again, we'll see that the most important thing is that we understand exactly how we feel about each other? Yes, we clearly do. You see? You feel nothing but contempt for my well-being. That's not true. And I feel nothing for a woman who manages to, time after time, outdo herself in our staggering levels of blind self-interest. It's over, Valerie. For good. A pleasant flight. Eric.